We're continuing with the idea that we have invitations in uh, the uh, afternoon uh, with the resurrection of the dead, which is taken from Hebrews chapter 6, where there's a list of things that are the foundations or the fundamentals of the doctrine of Christ. Uh, on that list is the resurrection of the dead. And so um, in that theme, and following that idea, we'll be over in Acts chapter 26. Asking, can we believe that God raises the dead? And that is the central I suppose the central fact, the most important thing to understand, perhaps, for any person today, is that God does raise the dead, because it means a lot of things, uh, not only our eternal life, but also just in general, the situations of life can be turned around, that uh, things that seem like they're lost, uh, people that seem like they haven't got any hope of ever reforming, can actually be changed. And this is a form of resurrection. And yes, I do believe that God raises the dead. God has the power to raise the dead. In Acts 26, you find the Apostle Paul on trial. And um, there's three Three kinds of, uh, I guess there's three points I'd like to make here with regard to that. When Paul is on trial in Acts 26, we have verses 6 through 8. He said, I now stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. To this promise, our 12 tribes, earnestly serving God night and day, hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? These are the things that Paul said when he was being put on trial at a time when he was being falsely accused of having created some kind of a riot or a stir, attacking the temple, attacking Jerusalem's leadership. That's just not true. None of that's true. But what he said is that he is on trial because of hope, judged for the hope made to our fathers. It is this promise that our 12, our 12 tribes hope to attain. It's for the sake of this hope that I am accused. And in the eighth verse, that hope is this, God raises the dead. That's the hope. God raises the dead. And it's true that all of Israel was geared towards this. That There is a theme that follows through all of Scripture that God can turn any situation around, including raising the dead. So the first thing we should say is that resurrection is our hope, and it was their hope too. They believed in God, and their hope was that things would get better. But we also have a hope of life after this. The other thing that is interesting in what Paul says is at the first of these verses, the sixth one, he said, I now stand and I am judged. Or I stand here on trial. But in the eighth verse, why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? That resurrection is thought incredible, unbelievable. And you know, this word for thought is actually the same word as judge. So when he says, I stand here being judged, or I stand here on trial, he follows that in the eighth verse by saying, why do you judge that resurrection is incredible? Why do you judge it incredible that God raises the dead, not believable. 
which raises the question, who is being judged? Is it Paul or is it God? <laughs> who's on trial here? Well, really, it's God who's on trial, even though Paul is standing there and uh, he is the one who's going to pay the price. It's God who's being tried. It's God whose words are not believed. It's God whose message is being rejected by those who attack Paul. And finally, at that eighth verse, why should it be judged unbelievable by any of you that God raises the dead? Why is that unbelievable? Why should that be impossible? Why should anything be impossible for God? How does that make sense, or in what world does that follow logically? A very reasonable thing for Paul to say, why should any of you think that God cannot do this or anything? That doesn't follow. And so it is with us. We ought to believe that God can raise the dead. Because, you know, I'm told that a leopard can't change his spots, right? People say that uh, people don't change very much. And, uh, you know, that might be what you observe happening in life, but... It's not because they can't do it. It's because they won't. They are able to change. God is able to raise the dead. So it reminds me, speaking of the hope of Israel, of Genesis 18, when God appears, you know, before Israel even exists, to Abraham and to Sarah, before they even have the next child, whose son will be Israel, <laughs> and says to them what is recorded in Genesis 18, verses 10 to 14. God said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life, and behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son, Abraham. Now Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. And Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. Sarah had passed the age of childbearing which is to say she was about 90. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I've grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old too? He was about 100. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah will have a son which is what he said at verse 10. It's, it's firm. It's twice it's been said. That's what's going to happen. The question is, can Sarah have a child? Sarah laughed because she said within herself, after I've grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old too? Right. She didn't think it was possible to have a child, and well, frankly, it wasn't possible to have a child, but with God, all things are possible. <laughs> That's what she missed. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Genesis eighteen fourteen. Good question. That's a good question. God asks, what is it that you think is something God cannot do? <laughs> it's not possible. It's too hard for him to accomplish it. It's too difficult. Yeah, that doesn't exist. There's no such thing. And she certainly did have a son whose name was Laughter, Isaac. Over in Mark 10, when Jesus is teaching and reveals to his disciples that salvation is not determined by whether or not you're wealthy and whether you're comfortable in this life is not what tells you that you're living right or wrong. As people think that, they think, well, if you're wealthy, that means you're living right. And if you're poor, that means you're living wrong. You're suffering consequences for your wrongdoing. That's incorrect. Time and circumstance happened to them all. And they thought, well, how can this be? Which is why they asked at the 26th verse of Mark 10, greatly astonished, who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, 
but not with God. With God, all things are possible. So what is impossible with us is possible with God. Can Sarah have a child? Well, not the way we would do it, but when God says so, yeah, that'll happen. Can anyone be saved? Well, not not by human means, not by man's plans and man's ways of doing things, but yes, all things are possible with God. If we will be faithful to him, if we will look to him, he has the answers for how to be saved. It can be done. Everybody can be saved if they want to be saved, if they will come to him. And yes, it reminds me in John 20 of Thomas, one of the disciples, the one who happened not to be present when Jesus first appeared to them after he was resurrected. And he said, I'll never believe that he's resurrected. Can Jesus rise from the dead? Well, he said he was going to. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And it's recorded in John 20, 24 to 27. Thomas called the twin. One of the 12 was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples said to him, we've seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them this time. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. And he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here. Look at my hands. Reach your hand here. Put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. This word, do not disbelieve or do not be unbelieving, it's the same word that Paul used in Acts 26. Why should you believe or why should you judge it unbelievable that God raises the dead. In other words, why should you be like Thomas, who unbelieved instead of believing? Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Can Jesus rise from the dead? Well, the scripture said that he would. He said that he would. He raised Lazarus. Why would we think that's impossible? Even Abraham is said to have believed that God would resurrect Isaac. But you notice the 29th verse of John 20. There's a very important thing in this verse. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? The answer to that is no. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Seeing is not believing. It's the opposite of believing. <laughs> the blessing is not for Thomas, who could lay hands on him and, and you know, have the, the, this palpable miracle, literally feel these wounds Know that that is the body that was on the cross. That is the man who died and he is alive again. That's not belief. The blessing is for those who have not seen. That's pretty important to understand because we are saved by faith. And that's what we mean by faith. We have not examined Jesus. We never knew him in the flesh or in the body. We didn't know him personally. 
We are in no position to attest one way or the other. We are individually as to whether or not he is raised from the dead. The scriptures attest to his having been risen from the dead. The witnesses in the time that he lived attest to his having been raised from the dead. And just plain reason, why should we think it impossible for God to raise the dead? That alone is enough. Well, there's no reason to think God can't do it. So can we believe that God raises the dead? Well, yes, we can. God does everything. He can accomplish everything. Jesus' death was a terrible thing. There was no way for him to recover from something like that. Whether today or back then, certainly back then, today we would try some things. We would try blood clotters. We would try transfusions. We would try grafts, you know. There'd be things we would try to do to save somebody alive. But it wouldn't be enough. What happened to him was too much. Certainly in that day, there was no getting that one back. He was dead and he was very dead. He had no chance to survive that ordeal. And the point of that is that God can turn anything around, no matter how bad it seems. No matter how far gone it seems, how impossible that might seem, that that guy will walk again. You know, the word for raising the dead is an interesting word that I will bring at this juncture. It's a word that means stand up, actually. Stand up or raise as in pick up by the hand, <laughs> lift, we might say, rather than raise. Um, and in your, you know, the other, the synonym for that is Anastasia, which is Anna is up and Stasia is stance or standing, stand up. Uh, why is it Anastasia? Why is it stand up? Because it's always spoken of in a very concrete way. When we say resurrection of the dead, what it literally says is standing up from among the corpses. If you go to a morgue, if you go to a mausoleum, if you go anywhere on a field of battle and there are corpses everywhere, the thing you will not see a corpse doing is standing up. They don't do that. He'll say, well, everybody here is dead. Now, wait a minute. Look at that one. What is he doing getting up? What is he doing standing up? Well, that one's not dead. That's the meaning. It's fairly simple, really. Uh, but it's very stark in the Greek when he says, standing up from among the corpses. He was with the dead. He was one of those corpses, but now he's standing up. Which is not what you expect. That's resurrection from the dead. It's unusual, yes. It's notable. It's a great miracle. It's the grandest of things that God has done. Can you believe, God, that he can turn that around? Yes. Yes, you can. There were things that happened with Sarah. There were things that happened with Thomas. There were you know, the things that Jesus said while he was teaching and reasoning, and Paul, too, in his teaching and reasoning. And there are many other things I think of Ezekiel cried, them dry bones. You know, in that valley where the bones reform, God remakes an entire army. That's resurrection too. Why couldn't he do it? He made the world and everything in it with just his word. Of course he can do this. Yes, we can believe it. And in fact, do believe it. It's true. He saves us. He turns things around. What you think of as a lost cause, that's not so. Well, I'll never be strong. I'll never be faithful. Well, that's not true. With God, all things are possible. This can be different. It doesn't have to be. Tomorrow doesn't have to be like yesterday. Today is the day of salvation. Well, we're speaking today, and you're not yet a child of God, not yet a Christian. It's time to obey the gospel of Jesus before it's too late. 
If you believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that has been resurrected and raised to sit at the right hand of the Father on high, then you also must put to death the old person, accepting that God is right and I am wrong. Put Jesus on a baptism for forgiveness, where you put to death the old person of sin and are resurrected as he is, a new creation in Christ Jesus, created in him for good works. Living faithfully is what the call is for all of us Christians. And it's true, God's power continues in our lives as we overcome the odds, as we overcome temptations, as uh, good things happen, and we are granted the grace and the mercy of God that sometimes those good things happen at our hands or we're somehow instrumental in making those things happen thankful for those things. If today you're not a Christian, become a Christian before it's too late. Be resurrected from the dead. Put to death the old life and become a new person in Jesus. If today you are a Christian and haven't lived right, repent, make it right. Let us pray with you too if that's what you need, whatever your need in the Spirit is. If you need our prayers, if you need to be baptized, let it be known now by coming to the front while we stand and sing the song selected.